Okay, use after free and use after move. So what is this? Uh, when you're allocating and deallocating memory on a systems level, you're typically calling down at some point to the operating system memory allocator, which you're saying, give me a block of memory. At some point in the future, when you're done with that block of memory, you say, okay, I'm done with it. Delete that block of memory. Now, Rust and C++ have largely solved the memory leak issue with RAII, resource acquisition is, uh, is initial, resource allocation, acquisition is initialization, and or reference counting. Garbage collected languages skip the whole problem by handling the deletion with mark and sweep and similar algorithms where they look to see what's in use, get rid of it. But if you're writing a low level systems code and you need to allocate some memory and you deallocate it, a surprising problem is you deallocate something and then you try and use it anyway. And this happens all the time in particularly C and C++, but it can happen in other languages too. Um, if you're allocating something to the heap and you have basically a pointer, that pointer might have become null, in which case you get a dereferencing null issue, usually a crash, or it might be a pointer to some arbitrary piece of memory that is no longer what you thought it was. At that point, it's anybody's guess what's going to happen, and that's not going to lead to a good day. On a bad day, you might find yourself on the CVE database, and that's generally where you don't want to be, the common vulnerability list. So here's a very simple example in some C++ made a structure. My class is new my class, we've put it up on the heap. And yes, I know all about unique pointer, but we'll talk about that in a moment. We, we set data inside our class to be five, we delete A, and then we print data. All good. Compiles with no warnings, so yep, if it compiles, ship it, right? Well, here's the thing, this doesn't crash on my Linux machine that I wrote this on. It prints out a big number starting with 161033. I have no idea what that was. I didn't, uh, um, I didn't uh, go digging with a memory allocator to find out what. In the online C playground, it seg faulted and died. So you've created an object, you've deleted it, and then you've tried to use it. Believe it or not, this is a very common problem. Um, if you go through the bug list history for Mozilla, um, you can see why uh, it inspired some of them to come up with Rust. Modern C++ elides the problem. You can use unique, um, you can use unique pointer um, to uh, guarantee that RAII won't let you forget to delete. That's awesome. You set data to five. Now, most of the time, you will never call the release function but you can, release specifically tells you, tells the uh, C++ system, I'm done with this pointer, delete it. Still compiles with no warnings. It still uh, gives a segmentation fault and crashes when I run it. And like I said, we're not going to talk about Go because Go is not going to let you allocate something, delete it, and access it because Go is ma managing your memory for you. And a lot of the purpose of Go was to make sure that this sort of problem stops plaguing the internet. So Rust makes this a little more complicated. Rust has RAII, the uh, C++ unique pointer system that you allocate something, it's attached to a smart pointer. As soon as that smart pointer goes out of scope, the memory gets deleted. Memory leaks are really hard to achieve unless you use std memory forget or the beautifully named command leak, which is built into the smart pointer type box for those odd occasions that you actually want to leak some memory. Um, which does happen on very low-level code, but in my opinion really should be marked as unsafe. So let's have a look at this first program. We make a class, we set some data, it's just like the C++ program. We allocate ourselves a class, we drop it, it's on the stack, not the heap. We try and print the data. Good news, this will not compile, because Rust is actually tracking that we've created the object. Rust is tracking that now the object no longer exists. And one of the reasons the Rust compiler takes a little longer than some other compilers is that for everything you create, it actually tracks the lifetime of how long that object sticks around and can it be accessed safely, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, just in case you thought that I was cheating by using the stack, the second one here is the same thing, but I use a box, I put it up on the heap, drop it, still won't compile because Rust has kept track of the um, ownership and existence of this um, all the way through. It 
<coughs> simply will not compile. There's no garbage collection. Deletion remains deterministic. I saw Bill just said if you can pay for GC, you should consider Go. I agree. And Rust is great when you need to worry about deterministic latencies, really need to get down to system down to what I think of a systems level, interacting with the kernel, interacting with devices, pushing for high, high performance. The two can live together hand in hand, go really well together. So use after move doesn't exist in C because C doesn't have a move construct. C++ introduced it and caused a huge amount of confusion. This is the point where I'm in a hall and I ask all the C++ programmers to put their hand up if they really know what std move does. And the sad thing is, this is where I stand there, and there's usually silence or one or two people sheepishly putting up a hand. It's not always great. What moving, because moving doesn't necessarily do what you expect. Moving uh, may copy the data, it may not. All std move in C++ does is it marks a, va a variable as now being what's called an x value, meaning it has been moved from. It might still be intact, it might not. The only guarantee you have is that it still exists in sufficient state to delete. So, um, it may have been plundered, it may not, you don't know. C++ has inter you know, introduced this and because of the way Unique Pointer works, if you want to be moving your data around, you have to move the ownership of Unique Pointer because Unique pointer, like Rust, has the concept that I own this variable, it's mine. When I, stop, when I either move it to someone else, it becomes their problem, or I drop it, I stop using it, it goes out of scope, it will be deleted. So here's a piece of C++ that I don't recommend you write. We've got a function, do something, except a unique pointer to a class. We make a unique pointer, we set it, we move the uh, instance of my class in to do something. Do something now owns that. So what happens when we do a print and print that data? Now the answer is undefined behavior. We honestly don't know what it's going to do. When I ran this on my computer, it gave me a seg fault. When I ran this on a different computer belonging to my wife, it printed five. It's not defined. You don't know. You can't rely on it. It's kind of dangerous. So in Rust, what happens when you do this? It won't compile because Rust tracks the ownership and the lifetime again. It's what the borrow checker is doing. Why the borrow checker annoys you when you first start because it is quite pedantic and will not let you do um, a lot of dangerous things. But Rust uh, tracks this in great detail all the way through your whole program. So you cannot make a use after move bug in Rust um, or in safe Rust in any way that will compile without um, the compiler simply refusing to make the binary at all, you can't run. Again, search through a CVE database, you'll see that uh, use after move has caused all manner of problems to the point that sometimes you'll find C++ forums debating whether or not move was a bad idea to begin with. Hi, I'm Herbert Wolferson, Arden Labs' Rust trainer. If you'd like to see more Rust content, click subscribe to our channel and be notified as it arrives.